once we have the financial statements prepared at the end of the period, we need to get the accounts ready to start recording transactions of the new accounting period. And that is done through a closing entry process. When we are doing closing entries, the only accounts we close out are the temporary accounts. And by temporary, we mean the accounts that hold transactions in them temporarily until the reporting process is done. Those accounts are revenues, expenses, and the owner's withdrawals or the drawings account. These accounts accumulate transactions only during the current accounting period makes it easier for us to prepare financial reports if we keep track of these equity transactions in separate accounts. These account balances are closed, and by close, I don't mean we just erase them off of the books. What we do is we take the balances in those accounts and transfer them to the owner's capital account at the end of the accounting period. By transferring the balances out of the temporary accounts and into the owner's capital account, we are transferring out the equity transactions from the current accounting period so that when these three accounts start recording transactions for the new accounting period, they are only recording transactions for the new accounting period and not mixing transactions from two different accounting periods. The permanent accounts, the non temporary accounts, which is pretty much every account except for the revenues, expenses, and drawings. The permanent accounts, assets, liabilities, and the owner's capital account. Those account transactions that were recorded in there stay in there. They are permanently recorded in those accounts. In other words, we do not close any of the permanent accounts during the closing process, only the temporary accounts. The closing process is done through a four journal entry, which we call for closing entry process. The first closing entry closes out the revenue accounts. The second closing entry closes out the expense accounts. The third closing entry closes out an income summary account, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then the last one closes out the drawings account. Let's assume at the end of the accounting period, the company in their general ledger reports one expense with a ending balance of 18.1, a revenue account with an ending credit balance of 25,000, and an ending, or a owner's capital balance of 7,000. During the accounting period, any revenue transactions and expense transactions had been recorded into revenue and expense account. They were not recorded directly into the owner's capital equity account. Assuming that these are the balances at the end of the year, we need to close out revenue expenses as well as the drawings account. And the drawings account is not shown here, but we'll get to that in a minute. The first step, the first closing entry, is going to close out the revenue accounts. Here we're seeing that we have one revenue account it has a credit balance of 25,000. If we want to transfer and close that balance out, to get rid of that credit balance, we would debit the revenue account. So our first closing entry will debit the consulting revenue account for 25,000, and it will transfer that balance to this income summary account. And this income summary account is only used during the closing process to summarize income as we're closing out revenues and expenses. So we're going to credit or transfer that balance out of revenues and into income summary. When we do that, the balance in the revenue account is now zero and the transaction balance is now recorded in income summary. The second step is to close out the expenses. We are, have one expense account here that we need to close out. That expense account has a debit balance. So to close it out, we are going to credit the salary's expense account for its balance of 18.1. We will transfer that balance into our income summary account for the total amount of the expenses. In doing so, the salary's expense account is now zero and the 
expense account balance, or the summary of the expense transactions, has now been transferred into income summary. Income summary is now summarizing the difference between the revenues for the period and the expenses for the period. After we do that, income summary is left with a credit balance of 6,900, which represents the amount of net income for the period. That net income has been summarized in here and we are now ready to make the final transfer of income into owner's capital. So our third closing entry will be to get rid of that credit balance and income summary by debiting that account for its balance. And we will transfer that 6,900 over here to the owner's capital account by crediting it 6,900. This ends up transferring the amount of income that was summarized in the temporary income summary account and transfers it over here to owner's capital, increasing owner's capital by the amount of net income for the period. The fourth and final journal entry will be to close out the drawings. Assume that the owner's drawings was left with a $2,000 debit balance at the end of the period. We are going to close that out directly to the owner's capital account. It's not part of income, so we don't include it in the income summary. We just close it directly to owner's capital. So to get rid of that debit balance, we are going to credit the owner drawing account for its balance of 2000 and debit it into owner's capital. When that journal entry, when that closing entry is posted, the drawings account is now zero and we have debited owner's capital, decreasing it by the amount that the owners have withdrawn. After the four closing entries that closed out the revenue, expense, and drawing account balances, have been transferred to owner's capital, the owner's capital balance will reflect increases to it from the amount of net income for the period, less any decreases as a result of the amount the owners withdrew during the period, leaving us with an ending balance in owner's capital. If we were to prepare a post-closing trial balance, another trial balance to make sure the general ledger is in balance, after the closing entries, it would show that the temporary accounts all have zero balances. Revenues, expenses, and drawings have no transactions recorded in them. So when we start recording transactions in the new accounting period, those accounts will only be summarizing the equity transactions for the new accounting period, making the end of period financial reports very easy for us to prepare for the new accounting period.